right, it's time to play more Vintage Cube here on my YouTube channel. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. What do I have here in this opening pack? I immediately see a One Ring, which is a card that will slot into basically any deck. And I don't think I've been playing with it too much, actually. Um, aside from the One Ring, it's funny, when I saw like the Saga, this restoration of a Ganjo, I thought it was an Urza Saga. And then the pick was actually going to be quite hard. Um, aside from the One Ring, there's a Fetch Land, there's a Teferi, there's a bunch of replaceable stuff. I'm not a big Fast Bond guy. I've been wanting to work on that for some time, but I, I've never, like, found a good spot to, uh, to practice that. I guess, I don't even know how to start a draft. Like, let's say the One Ring wasn't here, then maybe you can argue I'm supposed to take Fast Bond and see what happens, but that is going to be for some other day. Let's take the One Ring and, uh, see what else we can scrape together here what are we gonna follow that up with so the thing about the one ring is i can use it as a card to uh, accelerate out i can use it as a card let's say curve hopper in my aggressive deck i don't think that card is just very flexible mm, that being said it could be cool to take mox diamond here to try and accelerate it out if i would take mox diamond and taking it over a couple of fetches a couple of good duels i can see that Let's try the Mox Diamond. I mean, if I go, if I power out the One Ring with Mox Diamond, it's uh, definitely worth its weight in gold. Hmm. Things got interesting here, I believe. Um, so the bread and butter pick here is Noble Hierarch. Same, same point. Turn three, the One Ring. Let's go. Um, then there's something like Underworld Breach to try and go bonkers. There's Kappa Cannoneer if I want to, you know, pick artifacts from here on out. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. This is probably Noble Hierarch. Um, with Kappa Cannoneer being my, my second. Okay, let's take Noble. Let's see if we can go into, like, multicolor green. Um, get some good haymakers and go from there. Okay, so Crucible and Ren are interesting because I have a Mox Diamond, I play green base, etc, etc. But the problem is I already passed three fetches, so I think I'm just going to go Hex Drinker and, you know, move on with life. But those land uh, recursion cards are also good, for sure. Mm, yeah, this is a bit more unexciting. So Once Upon a Time is a card that, I'm, I know, I'm decently happy to play as my, you know, 22nd, 23rd spell card. Um, nothing, nothing special. Here's a Triumph with no green in it. Here's a Duel with no green in it. So, what's realistic here? Something like Walking Ballista is, like, decent card most of the time. I don't know what my second color is, but maybe it's good to stay kind of open. It's that or just take the Once Upon a Time and move on. Yeah, I'll try and take the Once Upon a Time. I don't know. that I could be convinced uh, of numerous things about that pick. Hmm, here's a Grim Monolith. So funnily enough, had I speculated on the Ballista, if I take the wrong Grim Monolith, I'm getting closer to the infinite mana. Here there's like Scavenging Ooze, random Zyboard card, or, you know, niche main deck card, I guess. Double white cards, the best card in the pack, Council's Judgment, so I'm not going to take that. Hmm, I could take a green-red land or just the monolith. Maybe I'll just take the monolith. I think having the ability to power out some insane stuff is probably pretty strong. Oh, now, now funnily enough, we have, I would say, two and a half reasonable picks here. Sylvan Carry added, bread and butter. Enable splashes, most likely going to be good in my deck. Channel. Channel is like the upside card here. I already have Monolith, so I'm like incentivized to play heavy, colorless, um, big spells. And then there's Coveted Jewel as the honorable mention, which is just a good card if you're on the board, you play Grimonolith, you find like a combo or two later in the draft. I'm going to try and pick Channel here. It should be fun. But I'm not sure. So with that being said... After picking Channel, I'm probably supposed to take Memory Jar here. Memory Jar. Channel Memory Jar is not, like, insane, but it can be fine. There's also Enlightened Tutor, which right now can go get me the One Ring. It's definitely worth um, tutoring for the One Ring. 
Also, if I manage to get something like Portal to Phyrexia later, it combos with um, Channel. Okay, I'll, I'll try and Lightning Tutor, but definitely not sure. So, after taking a white card, I think I'm supposed to take the white fetch. Pretty insane to wheel a fetch line. I can't remember the last time that happened. Um, Questing Beast is also here. That card is decent. I'm, I'm going to try and shoot a little bit for the stars here and see what happens. Oh, True Name even came around, but came back around, but I'm not sure about that. Maybe I take Taiga. There's like a bunch of red cards I want to play in this type of deck. So, yeah, let's take Taiga. Okay, here's Ulamok. Probably supposed to take Ulamok here, right? Channel Ulamok kind of makes channel worth running. And the Renin 6 is here. What is going on? Okay, I'm super happy about that. And so is Ballista. Might play Ballista, who knows? And then there's another red green land. I think it's better than Wayfair. And another red green land. Huh. Okay, so we ended up with Fetch and Ren. Can't really complain about that. And I'm thinking about the Enlightened Tutor. Let's see about that. We can just add channel down to the normal uh, place on the curve. I usually put like the incompleted combos over here to the right. All right, next pack. We're right back in it here. Hmm. So let's say I was I actually believed my, you know, Ren and Six, I might get stripped by in this and that plan. I could take something like Titania. Um, and in that case I have to ask myself, is Reclaimer the better pick? Right now I can't reclaim her for anything. Um, but that might change. So it's also just a stomping ground, which is like makes it so that I can play my whatever, Ragavan, Fable, hmm. Bombardier, Minsk and Boo, all of those cards, like, with no effort at all. Maybe that's better. I can see Tingy Stomping Ground and just powering the... my, my deck's ability to make red mana. Okay, so this pack looks pretty bad. Let me give it a better look. There's an Excavator. Maybe it's just time to speculate. Maybe I speculate a little bit more on the lands theme. So let's put that over here. Like in the maybe pile. Ooh, nice Shieldred. I don't think I can take that card, though. Shieldred, definitely the best card in the pack. What else do we have? Mm, card like Exploration could be cool if I get my like machinery up and running. Card like Currency Converter's decent. Hmm. Okay, we can take exploration here. Let's see what let's see what that is all about. Definitely not my like what I'm the best at drafting, but should be fine, should be fine. Um so with exploration noble mox diamond already is sentinel better than lanowar elves? That's actually a decent question here. Because in a perfect world I I really like these like mid range threats. Let's 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 try and take the Sentinel over the Lana Worlds. Tough tough pick for sure. Here's crop rotation. So the funny thing is, right now I'm speculating on having seeing a strip mine basically, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do that. I mean, I'll 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 go for it, but yeah, it could definitely backfire. That's for sure. Mm, maybe this is Lotus Cobra. Lotus Cobra, decent accelerant can. Power out some stuff. Oliphant is good, but I used to have so much green-red fixing already. There's also a Vampiric Tutor, which could be good. Let's see. I have a Mox Diamond, and that's it. Maybe I should try and get Vampiric Tutor to work. That will probably piece together the deck in the end. Okay. Um, Animate Dead, obviously the best card in this pack, but I'm not in a position to take it, I think. Water a grave. I don't think that helps me because I'm not playing any blue. Then we have a black and green land here. I think I should just take that. It even has an enlightened tutor, so and is fetchable with Arid Mesa. So yeah, let's just take that card. Mm, what about this? So I play. I have red mana. I have white mana. I mean, Athari is just a great card to power out. Is it better than endurance? Most likely. Okay, let's take that. We have a bunch of uh, speculative stuff out here. I don't really like that that much. Here's Titania. Hmm. 
Titania versus something like Bobble or Dark Depths. Can I get the stage? I think I should try and get the stage because then it makes it so that Strip Mine and Stage would both kind of complete my deck, if that makes sense. Here's another land that cast Authority. Yeah, th this draft is quite strange. I think I'm going to speculate on the Torsten here. Let's say I get something like Natural Order, Flash, or whatever. Here's a Savannah that helps my deck. Hmm, this, this draft is strange. This draft is, draft is very strange. I really have to make sure that I get enough playables. Or enough, yeah, maybe that's not the way to explain it. I need to get, like, a, a deck that functions. And there's a stage. I even missed it the first go-around. Okay. So we complete Dark Depth stage, which makes crop rotation. I didn't take the Reclaimer though, but it makes crop rotation and Vampiric Tutor worth it, right? So we can put those back. Speculating on these cards. I mean, I might. I, I, I'll probably play the Renan Six regardless. Oh, yeah, this, this is going to be. This is an exciting draft for sure. Okay, what do we have here? Hmm. We have something like Mana Vault. It doesn't look like the best Mana Vault deck, though. What else do we have? Blood Crypt helps my mana. I mean, that's like my default pick, unless I decide on something else. Then there's something like Overworld Oddity, which is just like a solid 4-drop. Um, let me just count how many black sources I have right now. I have 1, I have 2, I have 3. So that is like the bare minimum to play Vampiric Tutor. So maybe a fourth one would be quite good. Okay, I'll take I'll take that. Oof, 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 oof. yeah, this this pack is awesome. What do we do here? We Fable of the Mirror Breaker is one of the best like standalone solid cards, but Flash Torsten with a Vampiric Tutor already in the deck. Let me count my blue sources because I think it's going to be important. I don't have any blue sources in my in my lands already. I do have a Noble, I do have a Mox Diamond. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very hard pick. Abandon the Torsten, or fight a little bit more for the mana. I think it's too tough. I'm gonna take the Fable. Ah, that was, that, was, uh, that was a tough one. That might end up in the sideboard now. Okay, now what? Primeval Titan is a six mana, put the combo onto the table. The Dark Depths combo, that's not horrible. What else do we have here? We have a little bit of Gut, but I don't think this is the best Gut deck in the world. Hmm, maybe I just take Primeval Titan. I mean, I have a Grimonolith. I can see that. Okay. So, Primeval Titan. Probably don't play uh, Enlightened Tutor. Okay, next pack. Wood of Foothills, awesome. Mm, what else do we have here? I don't think my deck is supporting double white. One for Jailer. Two, three, four, five, six. Mm, I really don't want to register too many planes here. I think that could be the end of me. Mm, maybe just something like Fetchland to make Ren better. Okay, next pack. We have Halfling versus Pest Infestation for me. Hmm. Delighted Halfling. Powers out stuff. Pest Infestation is good when you have powered out stuff. Hmm. So, playing like Sentinel, Fable, One Ring, Authority ahead of schedule versus having another good card. Yeah, it's tough. We're going to go with the Halfling here. I think the Acceleration is, is going to be strong. Mind Twist is good in green acceleration. Er Zika's Chariot is good. So let me count how many black sources I have. One Mesa, one Wooded, three. Hmm. I only have four black for two black cards. That is doable. And but this card just, you know, wins wins games, dominates this, the board. So what am I most interested in? I'll try and go for the the green mid-range threat here. Very tough decision, to be honest. Hmm. Here's a Dismember I'll always play. There's also a Pinted Prism I'll always play. And a Reprieve I'll always play. I think this is too weak of a sneak attack deck. I don't think I have enough time to... Oh, with Torsten, maybe? 
Hmm. Okay, okay. Maybe if I take sneak attack, then I have channel and sneak attack. And I can kind of play the fatties. Okay, let's try that. That sounds good. And then I also get to play the Torsten, most likely. Hmm. What do we have here? Surveil land is decent. Right now I need to fill six slots on my deck. I'm doing okay on playables. Generous Ent will fix some mana issues and be some kind of a reasonable creature later in the game. Maybe that's the mature pick. We wield the Oddity, which is kind of cool. There's also Necromancy. Is this a good Necromancy deck? The thing is, I'm not killing my opponent's stuff. And I don't have that much stuff that's going to be good from the yard. Maybe I just take the 4-drop. Here's Through the Breach. Through the Breach is good with... I guess it's reasonable with Titan. It's good with Ulamog. It's good with Torsten. Okay, let's go. Here's a Colossus. Ah! Colossus, Colossus. Hmm... The fetch, uh, the tri land is not wor really working here. I don't think I'm playing the Colossus though. Even though it's good with channel. Green white land, would I play it? Maybe it's better with green black actually. Don't think this is Crater Hoof deck. Here's Tarmogoyf. Kind of always reasonable. Let's see. And there's Kozilek. Oh boy. So. I think Kozilek's better than Blightsteel for the simple fact that just one blocker negates the Blightsteel entirely, and they're both good with channel. Okay, this is uh, extremely interesting. I think the deck building is going to be very interesting. So right now I have a full deck, which is funny, but obviously that, that's not how it works. So let's cut Termogoy for sure. I can see cutting Excavator. I already have the Ren, and I don't have the Strip Mine, so let's cut that. You have two fetches. That's kind of cool. I have a crop rotation. Okay, yeah. Ren is definitely worth it. So let's see. What do we have here? We have... Maybe I just cut Torsten, because it's not good with Channel. And I already have three cards that's good with Breach and Sneak, and I think that's enough. Because I really don't want to draw them like at a bad, at a bad time. So now if I go up to 16 lands, I, I kind of want to get to 17 lands. So let's see if we can find one more cut. Some green midrange stuff. There's Once Upon a Time. You would think Once Upon a Time was always worth playing, right? So maybe I don't cut that card. Hmm. Maybe it's just Walking Ballista. I can bring that in against, like, small creatures. So now I have four land slots in the deck. Four. That's really not a lot. So let's quickly make sure we have enough green. One. Let's put spell lands over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a good start. So, I mean, perfect world. I go to 11. Let's count red. I'm trying to cast Fable. Sneak attack through the breach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Love it. So we can also just go one mountain here to have like untap that shot of a wooded or whatever. Um, let's count the black. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. I like that, so no no swamps needed. Let's count white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Even halfling works, so I don't need that either. Okay, this is this is kind of cool. Then I feel like I should just go plus one forest, plus one mm, maybe just plus two forest actually. Yeah, I kinda sometimes need green to, you know, get going. All right, this deck looks kind of awesome. We have Channel Eldrazi, we have Sneak uh, Through the Breach Eldrazi, we have just Power Out Fable, Sentinel One Ring on Curve, we have a little bit of, uh, what was the other combo? Yeah, we have a uh, Married Lage combo out of, um, what kind of consistency do we have for that? We have a Crop Rotation and a Vamp Tutor. Yeah, this'll, this'll be cool. I'll uh, save this deck and uh, get to the games. See you then.
Alrighty, it's time for round one. I'm playing the sweet, sweet green Merit Lage deck. Let's see if we can get to channel some stuff as well. Yeah, this is going to be cool. I haven't played a deck like this in ages, so definitely not my home turf. What can we say about this opener? We can say that Exploration is probably not even better than a land. That's not good. So I will have to look at my deck list from time to time. Drop rotation. I guess I just hang on to that and hope, a complete, hope to complete a combo later. Later. Faithless looting. Sure. Kind of scared here. Please discard two lands. Also, Grimonolith is worth worse than a land in this hand. Kind of annoying. Archon and Inferno Titan hits the bin. See if there's some kind of tapped land we can get here. Yeah, I think the tri land will um, make it sh so that we have all our colors and we still have a double green. Well, let's try and draw land. I do draw land. Forgot to be more exact. Hmm. I don't think there's any standalone land I can go get in this deck that's, like, useful. Here's Inquisition. So that means I'm not getting reanimated this turn, which is good news. Fable hits the bin, most likely. Channel? Well, I guess Sneak Attack will have to do. Um, yeah, the, the sad thing is the opponent can actually, you know rebuild here without like that wouldn't be that wouldn't be insane uh if the opponent just rebuilds here and still wins the game but i have to do it in case they have like three mana reanimation and the good thing about having sneak attack in play is i have a lot of like i win the game cards take 10 it's a good spell right take 10 sacrifice all your lands So now I have to think about, I can get into some situation where um, crop rotation for Raging Ravine can kind of be useful, but that's definitely not yet. Mm. But it is maybe next turn. Yeah, let's see here. I have Raging Ravine as like a creature land. So what if I go... Hmm. The thing is, I also want to untap the monolith, but I think it's better to instep crop rotation for the Raging Ravine, and then if I draw land, I can activate. If I don't draw land, I'm hopefully happy. Let's see. The downside to doing this is if the opponent just has, like, a simple removal spell for the land, and I draw, like, stage or depths later, I kind of look like a jerk. I think this is okay. I could also just, you know, draw a big creature and that's that. Kind of feel like I'm getting Archon next turn, though. Let's see. Mox Diamond, worst possible draw. We have to pass here. We have to remember to untap the Monolith. And, yeah, let's see if we get Archon. I expect us to get Archon at three mana here, but I don't. Hmm. Gonna be kind of a tough investment here if I, wanna, if I need to tap my Monolith to activate my land. Okay, I think playing Oddity is just better. So I can do both with Sneak Attack, but that doesn't even kill my opponent, so I'm not gonna do it. Counter spells are live here against the Oddity, which is annoying. Here's the removal spell I talked about, or bounce spell or whatever. Yeah, there's the removal spell, so... I mean, we have to get rid of that no matter what, though. Can't complain too much about that. Ooh, nice Wasteland. Don't Living Death me! 
Okay, the opponent goes sneak attack, so this game could be over quickly uh, in one direction or the other. Isika's Chariot. Good card and all, but could easily be too late here, and I get sneaked. I, I kind of hope my opponent discard these creatures before having sneak attack, and then when they drew it, it's like, oh yeah, I needed to keep one creature. But that's obviously me daydreaming. Three mana in the pool. Maybe this is some frantic search. Nope, bitter reunion. The opponent keeps digging. Mm hmm. Discard Thran Dynamo. Play land. And. Flashback looting. So we live to see another day. We can still draw Fatty and clinch the game. Or we can, you know, depend on the opponent breaking some more. It's getting tougher and tougher for sure. What's the draw step? I think I have Ulamar, Kozilek, and Prime Evil Titan that wins the game. I don't think my opponent has a play here. Simply think they're making coffee, changing diapers, or anything in between. Delighted Halfling. Not exactly what I wanted here. So now I attack with Chariot, put my opponent to five, make another cat. I guess a card like Nuff Out could disrupt that. Now the question becomes if I actually lose to Archon, I probably do. The opponent had removal spell and wasteland to kind of not die to my small ball stuff. Ooh, there's bizarre. The opponent keeps searching. They get to keep the one good card out of the four. Um, if it's a big creature, it could be in trouble. If it's reanimation, it could be in trouble. Okay, the discarded blight steel. Here's a tolly. Let's see what they hit. I mean, I have some some great cards and some bad bad cards. Through the breach, I imagine is a terrible hit. So snapcaster mage. Okay, this is acceptable, actually. Snapcaster Mage into what? Sheldra's Edict? The opponent's out of cards. The opponent can attack me for seven. Yeah, okay, that'll, that'll, that'll do it. Because um, the Atali dies. The Snapcaster can only block one, two, two. So that means Delighted Halfling and two cats are lethal. That was a, that was a strange game. Now I'm very sad I don't have... Um, Ooze or Tarmogoyf, because it's going to be a race, and I don't think I'm favored in that race against, you know, black reanimations. Um, hmm. Are there, I mean, I still like all my cards here. That's the thing. I mean, Ren and Six isn't anything to write home about, so maybe I just go Tarmogoyf over, um, yeah, Tarmogoyf over Ren and Six. I think that's fine. What else? I don't think I can do much. Fauna Shaman to do what? No. Okay, I'll try. It's a bit sad I don't have Endurance Ooze or whatever, but I didn't pick them and I saw them. I even saw like Soul Guide Lantern, etc. Um, maybe I should think about that in the future, especially when preparing for the mocks, if it's the same cube. Picking up like a piece of gra Graveyard Hate along the way is... Uh, is good when you stumble across reanimator. Okay, on the draw here, opponent takes a mulligan. I have a hand that's gonna lose to, you know, the opponent having great stuff. It's gonna be competitive if they don't, so yeah, that's usually like the definition of stuff that I keep. I could I could press the mulligan button un until I have, you know, I don't know, some good, like, accelerate out Fable a turn faster or something along those lines, but 
I don't really I don't really like that that way to play. I did see Wasteland the other game. I have to remember that. So it doesn't change a whole lot, but I'll play Forest turn one. Talisman, fine. Let's see if I can find a play. That would be kind of cool. Okay, so <laughs> that is definitely a play. Channel the One Ring. I mean, let's let's accelerate out the One Ring, shall we? Channel. Let's draw. Wow. Kozilek. So, yeah, I mean, I'll play Kozilek and go to Not A Lot Of Life. I think that's worth it. So Kozilek puts me to six and I have a one ring and the opponent could, you know, play some kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna, like, play out Monolith. I think that's too much. Mm, yeah, let's not do that, even though it's kind of tempting. So what do I discard here? I probably discard card like Fable. Seems very slow. Yeah, I don't think Fable is what I want to be doing. And what else? Mm, I don't have white mana right now, which is, but I can go get it with crop rotation if I want to. And I have an Eldrazi, so that's not really what the game is about. I mean, right now, I think I have to uh, pretend my opponent is dealing with this Eldrazi, right? And then how do I win the game from there? Looks like Sneak Attack is not the best. We can discard Sneak Attack. Maybe I'm banking on this Authorius Lifelink. I feel like if my opponent deals... Okay, they don't. Fair enough. But if my opponent deals with this Koselec, I'm actually on some kind of clock here. Okay, that was pretty awesome. Channel the One Ring. Just draw the one card for good measure, find a 10-man Eldrazi, and that's all she wrote. All right, that'll do it for round one. Let's get some more. All right, round two, and uh, oh, this looks awesome. So what can my hand do here? I can go turn one Noble, turn two Grim Monolith, turn three Through the Breach in Kozilek. Definitely into that. Let's see if it's enough. Sometimes you just get thought seized and <laughs> or countered, and, and it doesn't do anything. Sometimes it's uh, five mana win the game. Let's see. Okay, Copper Line Gorge is better land to play out, I guess. So the funny thing is, even if Noble gets killed, I can do that play. Channel is a good draw. <laughs> Let's channel some more. It's actually been a few years since I channeled, had a good channel. I was very. Very happy with that. Outland Liberator. Okay, that is a card that can kill Grimonolith. Maybe I'm supposed to respect that. Oof, nice draw. So, how can I respect that? Let's see. Right now, if I go Lane Monolith, that's four mana. Okay, so I wait a turn. I play Hexdrinker, level it twice. I think that's the play. And then next turn, I have five mana. I can kind of use the Grim Monolith as a Lotus Petal. And then I have some stuff like Hex Drinker, the opponent might be interested in killing. Let's say they go land, kill the uh, Hex Drinker, and that's like their turn. Then they have four permanents and they can get through the Reach Co-Select. And then from there, it's pretty easy for me to win, I would guess. Okay, let's see if this, this, this works. This is obviously a very powerful draw, especially if I'm playing against, like a, let's say, green mid-range deck. <clears throat> Let's see what the opponent has up their sleeve here. I hope it's just like a solid solid mid-range play. And then again, we're out in we're in the same situation as last time where the opponent can theoretically rebuild. Um it is going to be quite tough, I think, because I have the Titan, but with that being said, my Noble could get killed, my Monolith is tapped at that point, etc, etc, so... Not a given, I just like my position here. Here's a Renin 6. 
basically just making sure that card doesn't say anything about like anti sacrificing. That's some other cards. Can't remember the which ones, but there's definitely some like you can't sacrifice permanence, you can't discard cards, etc. Maybe it's the Tamio. Okay. The opponent makes Jetmir's Garden into a creature. Hmm. Could be good, could be good, but uh, let's do stick to the original plan. Through the breach. I'm gonna Kozilek here, even though Primeval Titan would also be pretty strong. Mm, so yeah, I feel like I can attack both on the opponent. This is just, yeah, the opponent just doesn't have any resources left after this. Let's say the opponent sacrificed everything but the Outland Liberator, then trades with the Hex Drinker. I'm sure I'll be fine in that spot. Um, so let's see. Do I actually want to give my opponent that choice? Maybe I don't. Maybe I just do like this. Yeah, that's probably fine. I kind of changed my mind there, because if I clear my opponent's board... Yeah, it, maybe it's just silly to let them trade off this Hex Drinker, because Hex Drinker is actually, like, my play for next turn, like, just leveling up Hex Drinker and not, not caring. I feel like this game is just over either way, though. The opponent's going to take 13 to the Dome here. They get to keep one permanent. If they block to prevent 13 and go all the way down to zero permanence, also fine. Pretty nice turn three, attack for 13, have you sacrifice four permanence. It's been a while since I've had a good sneak breach uh, deck, but randomly the pieces just came together during this draft. I'm happy I, I... I guess what enabled me was I speculated on the channel, because then the colorless Eldrazi were kind of on my radar. So it looks like the opponent is trying to rebuild with Ren here, return a land and try and go from there, but the thing is I'm um, turning up the Hex Drinker. Okay, the opponent might have removal for that. Let's see. Okay, now they have to kill it. Or just throw a land under the bus, I guess, when I make it a 4-4. Not uh, ideal for the opponent, that's for sure. Good attack here from the opponent. Let's see. 33 Vigilance into the Hex Drinker. That definitely works. So, because of Vigilance, the opponent can go attack. Still cast a spell off of that land, which is kind of cool. Let's see what that is like oust, path, plow, whatever. I think I'm okay either way. Let's say the hex drinker gets dealt with, then I and I don't draw a play, then I can just use four mana to untap the monolith, and then Titan will complete the stage combo. Probably even just win the game by itself, but complete the stage combo for good measure. Okay. Let's put a counter on it. The opponent could have path or plow here. Let's see what this ultimate is. Okay. Okay, so that worked. Um yeah, my since my opponent's at four. I'll just attack my opponent. I'm one mana short um, to go and level up the Hex Drinker to level 8. The opponent has to block here with a land. Or Solitude, I guess. But they would have done that before Exalted, at least. Or before level up. The land blocks and 
Crop rotation. That's cool. That's cool. It would be something if the opponent threats to needle this game. That would actually be insane. Horizon Canopy it is. Let's untap, pass, and now the opponent needs to be a champ. Let's see if that's the case. The opponent has five colored mana available. They can get a land back with the Ren. But they have to deal with a progenitus type card in Hex Drinker. And I have protection from instance, so I feel like I can pretty safely just level up Hex Drinker and attack for lethal. I don't think a lot of things can go wrong there. Um, but funnily enough, we're probably battling kind of a pseudo, -pseudo mirror here. Looks like my Eldrassi plan is, is very strong against that deck. The opponent returned Sea Chrome Coast, just an untapped land. There it is. I'm thinking, of, oh, it looks like, yeah, 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 you can save a life here because of Ren. Um, it looks like we're getting balanced. That's actually sick if that's the case. We're not getting balanced. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I'm just going to pump some mana into the Hex Drinker. Yeah, the opponent realizes and we're off to sideboarding. Okay, so green pseudo mirror. Do I have any crappers against that deck? Um, also, I have to remember I have Blysteel on my sideboard. Let's say I play against, I don't know, like. Spell combo with no blockers or something. Um, let's see. I think I like all my stuff. The thing is, my, my deck doesn't have, like, um, polarized cards, like, let's say, Flame Slash or something along those lines, right? So, my deck, I, ju I, just, I, ju I just build it to be, you know, the best proactive version. And then, I guess, sometimes you can go, like, oh, yes, yeah, so he showed a lot of weenies. Or, oh, whoa, my opponent doesn't have any blockers. And then you can kind of make some stuff. I guess Tarmogoyf is also fine against some... Um, aggressive decks. But I'll just resubmit here. Let's see if we can keep, you know, presenting Eldrazi's way, way, way ahead of schedule. And then we should be in, uh, in good shape. Channel. That's, uh, that's how I remember Cube from when I started playing. It's like, oof, Channel Emrakul. That was like the dream, right? But yeah, I mean, Channel Costa like definitely did the job in round one. So yeah, Channel Drazi still still good. Just very hard to put together. Like this is the dream scenario when it comes to a deck for it, right? I decide I want to go into multicolor green. I pick up some red green fixing, you know, just because of the cards I mentioned were not even sneak attack breach. It was like Minsk and Boo, uh, Fable, Ragavan, Bombardier, Gut stuff along those lines, right? But then I just end up enabling. Pretty insane red green uh, Eldrassi shenanigans. Okay, we're ready. So, worth noting is Table of the Mirror Breaker is not a legendary uh, spell, so can't play it with Halfling. Still think this is a keep. Once upon a time, I'm going to wait until, you know, until I see my draw step, and then we can kind of go from there. Mox Diamond is pretty darn sweet here. Let's play Once Upon a Time. Dark Dips. I think that's uh, how I'm supposed to play Magic. 
Let's take Dark Depths, and then I can go turn one. Maybe I go turn one, discard a forest, play Halfling. Can I just activate next turn? That's insane. I'll try that. I'm playing out the Dark Depths that my opponent knows about, so technically that's better because of information. But if it wasn't for information, I should have played out this land, I believe. Let's say my Diamond or Halfling gets killed. Then I just have one more mana source in play, so... It's, it's only based on uh, information or a lack thereof. I'm actually scared about resolving the combo. I should probably... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just both die and it doesn't matter. It's been such a long time since I've activated a Thespian stage. Yeah, let's see here. What did the opponent show last game that could kind of disrupt that? I don't think anything, but... We'll see, we'll see. So the question is now, do I play around sorcery speed stuff? Or do I play around Wasteland and Strip Mine? I think I just make it on my opponent's upkeep. Opponent's playing red, green, and all. Oh, the opponent showed crop rotation last game. Oh, no. Ah, I'm so scared. The opponent showed crop rotation. Ah. Okay. I go for it. I just remembered now. Crop rotation. That's the card. Um, so let's see. Let's not get crop rotated. Okay, so far so good. We didn't get... And we get, didn't get, you know, interacted with by lands. But uh, there are definitely other possibilities here, especially when you're playing all colors. I can't believe how people play this in, uh, in Legacy, like lands and stuff. I would be on the edge of my seat every time. <laughs> okay, that card gets just ridiculed by one spell, and I look like a jerk. But let's see if we can kind of bounce back here. No Merit Lates kill for me today. Let's play Fable, see what happens. Hex Drinker was a decent draw as well. Yeah, I don't, so let's say we play open deck list, and I realize my opponent has crop rotation, strip mine, touch, and like let's say one more card to deal with the twenty twenty. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, am I supposed to sideboard it out? Am I supposed to just jam every time? Am I supposed to, you know, play out Fable first, play Hex Drinker, and then have it like at the end of the rainbow, or like what am I going to do? I think it's very tough. I think I like going for it though. Also, I'm not sure I saw any spells that dealt with the 2020. I just saw crop rotation and kind of connected the dots. Okay, so it looks like the opponent either has a very bad hand or, um, you know, ramping for some big plays. If I get to attack with the Shaman, I really like my position. If the opponent spends a removal spell on it, fine. I think at the very least, I play a Hex Drinker and level it to a 4 4 this turn, which is not bad. Okay, Sneaky Boy. Maybe that's worth the. Uh, use Fable. I'll try and discard two lands here. It, uh. I've had this. I've had this experience before where, let's say, I keep the lands drawn to more lands, then I'm flooded. I do like this and I get screwed, so it didn't disappoint. Hmm. 
So I can go attack with Shaman, play the One Ring. I th think that's just what I'm going to do. No block here would, is fine for me. Double block here would be great for me. So yeah, I like my position. Also, I can make the ring on counterable for whatever it's worth. I guess it, the opponent could theoretically have like Mana League, Remand, etc. Let's play a legendary card, the One Ring. Can we find land? We couldn't find a land. We found a sneak attack, so... That could, that could help me down the line. I'm also kind of scared, like, if the opponent has all mana in the world, could be anything from Fractured Identity to Omnath to setting up for Upheaval. Is this Dak Faden? Oh, it's Seed Shark. Okay. Seed Shark is a beatable. It's the spells we're kind of, we're crossing our fingers. We don't face, like, a ton of insane spells. Let's draw some cards with the One Ring. Let's not get Hull Breachered. Lose a life. At this stage of the game, just a couple of activations of the One Ring will bury the opponent, so it's just a matter of not getting cheesed or whatever, however you want to describe it. Let's. Raw. Old Breacher. Don't do it. I don't get Hull Breachered. Hmm. I feel like I'm supposed to just play Sneak Attack out and then say, you have an answer for this card. Otherwise, you're probably dead next turn. So let's pass the turn. Not gonna suicide the uh, shaman here. Ooh, is this uh, what's it called? No, it's not. Well, it could be unexpectedly absent. Actually, the opponent might be in the market to tuck that sneak attack away. Okay, opponent gets rid of the shaman. They don't want to let me attack. Oh, it's probably fine. Ooh, that's actually a cool one with shark because if you have a lot of excess mana, you get an even bigger incubator token. That's cool. So the opponent has one card left. That has to be a good one. A card like Balance would be awesome. But the thing is, you just rebuild so fast with the One Ring. And I, I mean, the Land or Elvish Mystic decks with, deck with Balance is probably not that amazing. So I just had to give Touch the Spirit Realm a good read here. It's only artifact or creature. So that means... Can't get rid of sneak attack. Now the opponent does have a little bit of removal for whatever I uh, bring to the table with sneak attack. And Reflection of Kikichiki cannot copy legendaries. So it's not like I can just make a new Ulamog. It would actually be... It's a good, like, uh, what do you call, like, speed bump versus sneak attack, I would say. Let's see if we can overcome this. Primeval Titan, I can make a copy of Prime Time. That means I get in for 12, I get a crap ton of lands in play. But then I still need, um, I, get for I get in for 12 because I copy it. But then I still need something to slam the door. This could get tricky, let's see. I mean, I have an abundance of resources, but this could get tricky depending on how my opponent chooses to play with um, the, the Touch the Spirit Realm. They could also be like, okay, I think I have to play around um, some not Eldrazi stuff that's good with Reflection, so I'm just going to Touch the Spirit Realm, the Reflection right away, and then just hope for the best. I wouldn't be shocked if the opponent just got rid of the Reflection. Oh, they can also get rid of the run ring, one ring. I just realized now. Okay, maybe that's maybe that's a good play. Who knows? 
we know it's not going to be enough here, but it could be good from the opponent's point of view. Okay, Chromeho stays back. This is the exciting one, in my opinion. What does the opponent do with that card? They kill the ring. Okay. Yeah, the the damage is already kind of done in this situation, but the opponent has to play like just put let's put our, ourselves in there. Oh, they get rid of the reflection. Okay, fair enough. The opponent has to figure out so I'm not a favorite to win at all, but what gives me the biggest chance to win, right? So we never fault our opponent for looking at that. Okay, so now we can go. Uh, we can go Ren and Six, kill Witness, play the two Eldra uh, play the Eldras uh, sneak the Eldrasi and sneak the Titan in. That is 16 damage, it's not lethal. The opponent has to sacrifice a bunch of permanents. I'm tapped out. So how much... Attacking power will the opponent have? Two plus that's nine. If they really want to, I think it's around nine or ten. We can definitely take that. Um, and if the opponent's at one life, they even have to have to have to kill the wren. Okay. So oh, I have to do this correctly. I go red, I go green. Kill witness. Sneak attack, Ulamog. Sneak attack, prime time. Go search up lands. What do we want here? Uh, let's see. Stomping ground. Blood crypt. I'm not going to take any damage. And let's attack for a bunch. Find some lands, eat land, the words. Opponents has to sacrifice four permanents. So I can lose to something like Time Walk, I think. Let's see what the opponent does. Maybe the exploration isn't very good here. Maybe the 1-1 one -one incubator isn't very good. Opponent goes to one. Play land. Pass. Those guys are gone. The opponent's at one, meaning Ren of Six is lethal. Upkeep and Perry Tutor will do the trick. So let's see. Now the opponent can make two creatures. That's seven. That's nine. They have to kill Ren and Six. They have to keep a blocker for Halfling. So it's kind of a tough spot. Creature land is gone. Not entirely sure what that is about. The opponent just dies to Halfling. It's super strange. Um, am I missing something? The opponent said one life. I can just attack with my main land. Or my uh, mana creature. Okay. I'll just find a random creature here. Activate my sneak attack. I don't even, I don't even have to. I'll just play this out. Attack. Yes. Strange. I didn't understand that at all. Like, at least keep back a blocker. But okay, we, we got the job done in the end with a bit uh, a few new wrinkles. <laughs> it looks like uh, the Merit Lage plan horribly failed, and then we kind of had to, you know, play the One Ring, play Sneak Attack, and attack a few times. All right, that means we'll be playing for the trophy next round. I hope to see you there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is the finals of the Cube Draft.
Let's see what we can do here. This looks like a cool hand where I have to thread the needle a little bit. So let's see. I play Forest. I cycle Generous End on the turn. Then I discard that new Forest to Mox Diamond. Then I play Ren and Six, get back that land, and then I can kind of get get into the game. If I if I find one more land, I can play Ring, and I already have three to to play Fable. So yeah, this is probably fine. I really don't want to lose that Ren and Six to something like Inquisition or whatever. But aside from that, should be should be playable. Then we have Ulamog waiting for when I uh, top deck channel like a boss in a few turns. Don't manatize me, bro. Don't do it. So funnily enough, here I think I'm supposed to get Ika because yeah, let's get Ika. Okay, so I guess we we have to sweat for it this game. Don't manatize me, bro. You manatize me, bro. Okay. So, that's like the worst possible scenario, manatize inquisition. I guess this is the worst because it made me like spend my mana, etc. Hmm. Cauldra complete. Let's see if we can draw land here to stay competitive. We don't. Yeah, that, that, that's probably the end of this game. Okay. We got utterly punished here. So that's the, dif the difference here between not playing magic at all and playing Fable, discarding some crappers, look into land, play the One Ring this turn, etc., etc. Huh. Yeah, that's uh that's a that's a good one. What a beating. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Mana crypt, mana tithe, all the nasty stuff here. Maybe we want ballista against that deck. Hmm. I think there's even a chance my uh twenty twenty combo isn't very good against that deck. But I don't know if we can realistically cut it. Let's see. If we get rid of Crop rotation and the combo. I can add walking ballista termagoy one land. I don't think that's horrible. Let's try that. I'm I'm not against like a white in general. I'm not too big on the combo. Let's see if that's just terrible logic. Okay, we oof, we we really got humbled there. That was. A very, very nasty game. Okay, this is cool. I can play turn one exploration, develop tap land, fable turn two. Yeah, this is cool. And then funnily enough, from there, I probably discard like Grim Monolith and I don't even know. Maybe I can discard a land there. Let's see. I actually don't have it. Yeah, we, we, we just see when we get there. Point is, Grim Monolith is not the best in this hand. The opponent's on a mulligan. We are looking to not get Mana Tithe again. It's actually funny because... I can, I can play around that, but... I just don't want to give up the equity. The equity of having, like, bad cards to fable away. I'm not going to respect the mana tithe. It's just. It's like the opponent could have mana tithe and punish me big time. I would be very sad. But I think if I do this play 100 times, it'll, it'll be good for me. That's usually how I, how I look at things. I look at things from like an EV standpoint and not as much like emotionally how, how bad would it be to lose the trophy to double mana tithe. Like stuff like that, you know? Stuff that can. Um sometimes influence your judgment. I've also seen another discussion that's cool is, is this, are you down a game or are you up a game? And then some people will argue that they, why it's reasonable to change, change your plays based on that. Okay. 
Nice draw. <laughs> Let's see. Is that if I discard... Hmm, I need to find a land here. So what if I just discard only Ulamog? Is that right? I think so. Don't draw the land. Hmm, so... Attack for three, play Monolith. Who's it like next turn? Yeah, let's go. The opponent gets to Cauldra complete. The funny thing about Cauldra is it's actually two permanents. But maybe I'm maybe I'm fine in that scenario. Instead of playing out the noble, I could have end stepped the through the breach to have more mana on my turn. Unclear what's better. I'm not even sure. So now if the opponent goes. Land Cauldra complete. They kind of have Stoneforge. Yeah, as like a bad permanent sacrifice. I think they'll still be in trouble, especially because the the Fable is flipping and have a Goblin, etc. So, and if they take twelve here, they don't have much life to play with. Maybe I get uh, Skyclaved, like get rid of the Fable. It's just a good play. Interesting. I'm interested to see what the opponent does here. Okay. Here's complete. Most likely getting in there. I'm now at 15. Chariot. Very nice draw. Um, I think the way to play this is tap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So worth noting is that card can get plowed. It did not, so the opponent's probably in trouble. I get another treasure, and I intend to play Seekus Chariot. Hmm. Okay. That is probably very good for me. My opponent is keeping the germ and the complete. The opponent's at three life. What's the... So this one dies. Okay, so I guess my opponent is stabilizing if I have nothing. Okay, maybe it's a good play. All right, so we kind of ran each other over, taking turns doing that. And we get to play for the marbles. That's always cool. Playing for the trophy, coming down to the wire here against a strong deck. I mean, I'm basing that off of seeing Mana Crypt, to be honest. Let's see if we can finish the job. Oof, this hand is uh, definitely not going to finish the job. Let's see. I have to go Mox Time and discard my only land to play a Mana Creature. Then I'm going to have a Dead Exploration. Then I'm going to go turn to Monolith. And then if I've drawn a land in the meantime, I have turn 3 Titan. Ugh. This is one of those hands where I kind of have to have to think about things here. The thing is, Exploration and Mox Diamond, those are just such a bad combo. But at the same time, I have Grimonolith and Primeval Titan, which are a good combo. Hmm, so let's see. If I get to play that Titan out, I kind of stabilize my mana from there, and mana's not a problem. I can go get, like, cycle lands, creature lands, etc., and that's kind of cool. I don't have the combo in the deck. If Titan just gets... God forbid, mana tithe. Can't do anything. My mana creature gets mana tithe. I'm actually not that scared. I start drawing lands. Is that good? My endgame is still this Titan. That means if I lose the monolith, I can never do anything. It's actually a tough one, but I'm going to mulligan that hand. Mulligan into a way better hand, so... Hmm. Hmm. I can get rid of a forest here, I feel like. No, maybe not. Maybe I don't want to take damage. Maybe I just get rid of Arid Mesa. 
or garden. Maybe garden. Okay, let's get rid of garden. So it's funny with with channel and one ring. It's pretty awesome to you know save a little bit on life. And I guess I need the tempo as as well. Forest horrible draw. Noble could get mana type. That wouldn't actually be the end of the world in this scenario. There's Ulamok. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Channel Ulamok one ring. What can go wrong? That's eight. That's nine. That's ten. Yeah, I mean, very tough for the opponent here. Filling a planes. I play around soft counters. Let's play the one ring. And the opponent's seen enough. <laughs> that was a pretty, pretty funny ending to uh, to this draft. I got utterly destroyed game one. Then I just destroyed my opponent twice in a row, and we get to finish off where we started with channel the one ring and uh, and an Eldrassi. I mean, yeah, sometimes you just destroy the opposition with good old channel and sneak attack. I hope to draw the, uh, draft those cards more in the future. I didn't really enjoy the whole Married Lage situation, but I guess it's a good tool to have. And it to be honest, it was just like a small package. I was playing one crop rotation. I was playing um, like Vampiric Tutor. That was even, and that could even help with putting up the channel. And the Primeval Titan is like my top end that randomly also got a, a big combo out of the deck. So... Pretty well-rounded deck. I got very lucky in the draft portion that I kept the door open. Um, I love speculating on the challenge, uh, channel and how it turned out. Sometimes it just ends up in your sideboard or it's like a terrible card, but this time we really did it to him. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope to see you back for more sweet action in the future. Bye.